For this video, I'd like to continue our discussion about these trigonometric values of special angles. And you might recall from a previous video with the unit circle on radians that we went through essentially how to find all of these different angle values and what their x and y coordinates will be. So for instance, for an angle of 60 degrees, which is pi over three, we know that on the unit circle, the x coordinate is one half and the y coordinate is the square root of three over two. And we essentially found this by just creating a triangle here where this big angle is 60, this small angle is 30, and you have a right angle here. So essentially we had this special 30, 60, 90 triangle and through those unique geometric features, we are able to figure out this X and Y value. And essentially for this angle of 30 degrees, you had the exact same triangle, it was just shifted. And then for that angle of 45 degrees, we have another special triangle, namely this 45, 45, 90 triangle. So we were able to essentially figure out all these different values because of the special properties of each of these triangles. But these values show up quite often in trigonometry. And you might recall from the previous video that we looked at a way to easily remember these. Namely, if you essentially give everything a denominator with the square root of four, there's a nice pattern that emerges. So let me just quickly write all this in. And the reason I did this is that essentially the X values count down and that the Y values count up. Remember that the X value is the cosine of the angle and the Y value is the sine of the angle. And the X value starts at one, so we start at the square root of four and then counting down, we go root three, root two, root one, and the square root of zero. And like I said, the sine function or the Y values essentially do the opposite, they count upward. So we have the square root of zero, root one, root two, root three, and root four. And you can see that all of these do actually simplify to these values in green here. But these values in white, this pattern, this is just a nice way to actually remember these different trig values. So now that we have a good way to remember these, let's actually try to solve some problems. So we can start with this first one where we need to find the trig values for the cosine of 150 and the sine of 150. And you can see I've just copied this unit circle down here with these different special values. So what you can notice is that 150 degrees is a multiple of 30 degrees, namely it's five times bigger than that. So essentially this angle is gonna have something to do with this 30 degree angle. Or in other words, we're essentially 30 degrees up from this negative X axis. So let me draw this in here. So we're looking at this coordinate here and essentially we need to know the X and Y coordinates. Since on the unit circle, the X coordinate is the cosine of the angle and the Y coordinate is the sine of the angle. And we know this angle is 30 degrees up since this big angle here is 150 degrees. So essentially, we're going to end up with a triangle, if I draw this vertical line down here, where we have this 30, 60, 90 triangle. And essentially, it's the exact same triangle that we would get over here for this 30 degree angle. And since we have the same triangle, the side lengths are gonna be the same. The only difference is that the X values over here are negative. So over on the left side of this Y axis, all of the X values are negative. But since we're still in the top half, of the coordinate plane, the Y values are positive. So we would have these same X and Y values, it's just the X value is negative and the Y value is still positive. So over here, for this coordinate point, the X and Y values would be minus the square root of three over two and a Y value of one half. So essentially, when we answer our question, the cosine of 150 degrees would just be equal to this X value here, minus the square root of three over two whereas the sine of 150 degrees is simply equal to this y value, which is 1 half. And let's move on to a second problem, very similar to this, except now we're asked to find these values where the angle is given in radians. So we need to figure out essentially how far along the circle five pi over four radians is. And we know that essentially if we go halfway around the circle, that that's pi radians, and if we go 
essentially 3 fourths around the circle. That would be 3 pi over 2 radians. And so this 5 pi over 4 is going to be between these. In fact, if you want to put this more in decimal form, this is 1.5 pi, and this right here is 1.25 pi. So it's going to be essentially exactly between halfway around and 3 quarters of the way around. So we're looking at this point right here. So let me draw in essentially that line. And notice that this is a multiple of pi over 4, or essentially it's 5 times pi over 4. So it's going to have the exact same features of this 45 degree angle, or this pi over 4 radiant angle. And we know that because if we were to draw a triangle here, that this angle right here, since this is pi all the way around, this is just another pi over 4 bigger. So essentially we have this exact same triangle that we would have over here, this pi over 4 or 45 degree angle, since this is a 45, 45, 90 triangle. And it's the same thing here, a 45, 45, 90 triangle. So it's going to have the exact same side lengths. The only difference is that now we're in the third quadrant. And down here, the y values are negative, but also the x values are negative. So it's going to have the exact same points, these root 2 over 2 values for its side lengths. It's just that both of them are now going to be negative. So the x and y coordinates of this would be minus root 2 over 2 and minus root 2 over 2. Or in other words, the cosine of 5 pi over 4 would just be minus root 2 over 2. And the same would be true for the sine value of 5 pi over 4. So you get minus root 2 over 2 for each. And that's simply because the x and y values on the unit circle are the cosine and sine of that angle respectively. And let's do one final example now where we're given the cosine and sine of 4 pi over 3. So now we're looking at that angle, 4 pi over 3, which you'll notice is a multiple of pi over 3. So now we're dealing with this 60 degree angle, or essentially the triangle that's formed by that. And to start, we need to figure out where this is on the unit circle. And like last problem, we know that if we go halfway around, that that's pi radians. And this is just pi over 3 above that. So essentially, we're going to be looking at an angle right about here. Since if I draw in this line, that this angle right here would just be pi over 3. Since if you add pi over 3 to pi, you get 4 pi over 3. So we can draw in this triangle here. And essentially, we end up with the exact same triangle that we would have right here for this 60 degree angle in the first quadrant. And since pi over 3 is 60 degrees, we have this 60, 30, or I should say 30, 60, 90 triangle here, which is the exact same triangle we have here. So essentially, the side lengths are going to be the exact same. So they will have these values for the x and y coordinates. It's just that both of them are now going to be negative since we're in the third quadrant. So let me just make a little bit of room. So the coordinates here would be minus 1 half for the x value and minus root 3 over 2 for the y value. And remember that the x value is the cosine of the angle and the y value is the sine of the angle. So we can now fill these in. The cosine of 4 pi over 3 would just be this x value minus 1 half. And the sine of 4 pi over 3 would be this y value minus the square root of 3 over 2. So the general strategy is whatever angle you're given, like let's say you're given an angle of 7 pi over 4, is to figure out what angle it's a multiple of from this first quadrant. And you can see this is just 7 pi over 4s. Or if you got something like 5 pi over 3, this is a multiple of pi over 3. Or if you got something like 11 pi over 6, this is a multiple of pi over 6. So essentially, Whatever one it's a multiple of, that is essentially the x and y coordinates you're going to be dealing with. You just have to be careful about where it is in the unit circle. And where it is will determine whether x or y is negative.